Greetings everybody. I'm making a video to talk about this amazing water plant here that's all around me called Bacopa. And um, let me just scan a little bit so you could see the environment that I'm in. I'm in my, right now, I'm standing in about like two feet of water and um, this plant basically is about three feet high so there's about like a foot sticking out of the water and two, maybe two feet in the water now and look you see uh here i'm in the water right now i got a bag here with me and i'm harvesting the bacopa now if you if you google bacopa b a c o p a and oh you can't see in this video but this here goes down like maybe for a mile down that way and from there to there is just okay. full of so, bacopa um, like there's I decided so it might as well just go here, here and um, I mean I couldn't even know what to do with all of that do a little bit of research in Google and also show you some of the um, some of my findings last time I did some research here so it it's pretty obvious if you put in bacopa Right, C B A C O P A. Let me uh, zoom up on here. Bacopa in Google, you get like, see, this is like almost 3 million hits. This is because this herb is very uh, praised and very useful in Ayurvedic medicine in India. It's been used for a long time. It's actually been used for a long time um, also. Uh, in Europe, in uh, in Greece, you know, uh, the the Greeks knew about this stuff. The um, the Babylonians knew about this stuff. This stuff is they have um, they talk about something similar in the Bible. So I mean, that's how long this herb has been uh, has been used, you know, for uh, medicinal slash also. Uh, spiritual purposes so you find a lot of this on the internet the bacopa um, it, it, they call it uh, Bram, Brahmi in uh, India it's in also in China in Africa everywhere but um, I'll, and I'll get back to that I just want wanted to show you now one thing here the um, the bacopa that has been mostly studied and that you find here bacopa you know this of bacopa number one herbal is mostly the what they call the bacopa uh, monieri the bram uh, brami however um where i find okay i found this american journal of uh farm tech research and they um and they studied here the uh anti uh, let me zoom it up a bit the anti antimnesic and in vitro uh, antioxidant effect of ethanolic extract of bacopa caroliana see B bacopa caroliana the caroliana is the one here that we find in the united states okay and um and probably um also in mexico and um in south america it's the tropical, subtropical um, area. Uh, they say the bacopa is like a pan-tropical plant, which means it's all over the planet as long as you're in the right climate. And so the question one might ask is, uh, the, 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 me the Indian medicinal herb 
Brahmi, okay, which has a lot of study has been done on it, like so much, because think about all of the universities, you know, in China and India and everywhere that have been doing this for like you know, hundreds of years. And then uh, more recently with the molecular biology techniques, and techniques, you know, like they're really doing this because they know how, how, how well it works. Now this Bacopa caroliana hasn't been used as much because we're basically here ju just starting to like, you know, uh, uh, do some uh, laboratory uh, extracts and, and then studies on it. Now they say here, and so what I was about to say is how do we know that the Bacopa monieri and the Bacopa caroliana um, have the same medicinal properties? Well, okay, so the research is coming in that uh, Caroliana uh, has the uh, same similar properties. However, more importantly is that they have found that these two plants, these two species, are what they call ortholog orthologs. Okay, they're orthologous in nature. And this this term is a is the term they use in genetics, which means that um, you could have two species. Okay, that are very very closely related genetically but they they have the same um, biological functions they function the same way biologically and and you could also have uh, that that two species that are are not so similar functionally speaking at you know um, at the biological level these two species are known to be orthologs so that should that should just by by there you know tell us and give us an indication that what what we find on one species of bacopa here we'll find on the other okay and so this one here they, they were just studying like um, things about memory and things about uh, the antioxidant now having said that they studied this here on rats okay a lot of the studies that are done, people don't realize this, but they're done on rats, and they have all sorts of stress tests, memory tests. Mm, they have, like, I mean, they, <laughs> I don't know how they do it and how they how they think they could understand, you know, cognitive. Uh, how could they relate cognitive behavior from Damn, rats to humans? But they do it. I'm making is to show you. This stuff. And this here, I made some essential oils with this here in it in a distiller and you just put this here in a steam distiller and it pushes out this most amazing oil because if I squish this in my hand and I smell it right now oh wow <laughs> it's like a um, a mix of uh, that eucalyptus type of a uh, of a uh, aroma like with with maybe like uh, the, that pleasurable mint kind of a, of a feeling, spearmint feeling, but it has its own smell. It's like Bacopa. <laughs> so yeah, I'm like just surrounded. I'm like right now in this uh, water, in this little water shed area, and it's just full of Bacopa. And um, so today's video is just to show you the environment in which it grows. Because I like to, uh, I harvest my herbs, I grow my herbs and myself, and uh, and I like uh, when I harvest wild medicinal plants. And this is also could be eaten as food. I mean, there's so many so many things they use it for the scalp and all sorts of stuff. But um, I like to know like where the thing comes from and what's its environment. Like, what's its where does it live? What's you know. See, so you hear that frog down there, and okay. Anyways, and um, yeah. So this is it. I'm sharing this with you guys. And let me see if I go down and I pull some out, completely out, and I put it here. You see that? Um, here's the roots, and then there's a. It's actually longer than what I thought because it goes from here, the roots here, all the way down, from there, all the way down, all the way to here. So this is more like, 
maybe four feet long. And so I'm actually going to um, take some of this here and transplant them. There's a pond behind the garden uh, uh, where I garden, you know, and there's an area in the pond where it um, the water is not too deep and it kind of goes, the water level goes up and down depending on the rain, but it always stays kind of moist. And I know that there's going to be at least like a foot of water and it maximum, uh, ma maximum water will be like about three, four feet. So I think, and, and if I look here at the lighting, this is, seems to be like pretty much, uh, it's not, I would not say that Bacopa is in the full light. This is partial to full, depending on the sun, you know, when the sun's down in this direction, it's shaded, partial shade, less partial shade, and if the sun moves towards here, it's full light. So it's got like some full light, but lots of partial shade. Down there, it's more partial shade. And um, so yeah, I'm harvesting Bacopa, and then I will make a video later on to show you what I will do with it. And uh, how I will prepare it, and um, and then I'll talk more about Bacopa. So this is just Bacopa, its environment. So right. here's like a paper Thank in the watching. neuro Bye -bye. psychopharmacology uh, paper, and they talk about the effects of um, Brahmi on the uh, human memory. So um, here they actually looked at um, humans. Okay, between 40 and 65 years old, double blind, randomized, placebo controlled. This is the kind of studies you want to look at double blind, placebo, with, you know, looking at placebo. Here they measured anxiety and they measured um, memory. And um, I mean, we don't, we're not, we don't have to go through all of this here, but, um, you know, this, uh, the, the, the introduction is often a good place to see, you know, what they will, they will sift through the literature, the scientific literature, and tell you what's already been found. See, like in Ayurvedic medicine, what they use this for, intellect and poor memory, okay? Now, um, in here, see, they say, um, um, these, these people here in 2002 were like, pretty much the first to do uh, a scientific study to look at how exactly the alkaloids were acting uh, on the um, in the in the memory how it worked and what they found here and, and we don't have to go through all of this here you know but what they found basically here was that the um, it doesn't help you learn better but it helps you retain the information longer Okay, so so you still like you won't you won't like get benefits like you could just study half an hour instead of an hour. No, if you if you want like you, you know you're gonna have to learn the information, but you're just gonna retain it longer. And then they also did here they looked at anxiety and they found you know it was also um, it was good for uh, anxiety. So I mean long term memory anxiety uh, are already too like important functions. Um, I'll talk about this uh, this book, what they have in this book a bit later. Here they looked at um, extract on cognitive performance, anxiety, depression in the elderly. Here we have, again we have a randomized double blind placebo. Um, here they looked at to try to fig to find if it would help for dementia and things like that, right? And this is like growing dementia and Alzheimer. They're not. They're not like. Uh, this is not. It's not pleasant to live with that, you know. And for for the person and, and the and the family and everybody, and it's it's growing. It's, people with cognitive like um, diseases are, is just growing more and more in in America, and so and so is depression and anxiety. I mean. So, I mean, if you got a plant that could, like, help you uh, with that, and this Bacopa, I see this research is coming out, that here also, um, they found that there's the evidence that it could safely enhance cognitive performance, okay, in the aging. Um, now, one thing I want to say that's important here is that 
um, you also have to look at what it is that they, they gave to people. Here's an extract. Now, some some do look at the entire plant and some look at extracts. Okay, you, you try to figure both. Extract, 99% of the time is an ethanol alcohol extract, which is basically you soak the plant, you dry it, you soak the the plant in alcohol, you shake it for, for a bit, you let it in there for a while, and then you you uh, evaporate the alcohol and whatever's left behind is like the concentrated you know form of the alkaloids plus there's the fat in there, flavonoids and all sorts of things that were able to dissolve in the alcohol, the ethanol and um, or if they use something else for it. And so this is an extract and I always like to look at that because I, when I use plant medicine I, I have to know, you know, are there side effects or not and if it's an extract I, it's not a problem. I do it myself. I do some extracts here and uh, and that's what okay when 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 people buy um, the tinctures okay this is big people go online and they buy tinctures or some people make them at home but most people buy tinctures at the shop or online and the tinctures are basically an alcohol um, infusion basically you're taking this plant you're drying it and you put it in alcohol and then they uh, they filter out the plant material and then they sell you the liquid, the alcohol. So the alcohol contains like this this extract, okay? And you have to put a few drops of alcohol uh, on your tongue. This is not the same as taking the extract per se because it's it's diluted. It's the extract diluted in alcohol. And you, you can't drink, like you can't drink the whole bottle of tincture. You're going to get drunk. I mean, this is like moonshine okay it's like plant soaked moonshine now this um what you can do is you could take your tincture and you could put it in a dish and you could let the alcohol ex uh, evaporate and whatever like is left behind is the extract so you can make the you could get your own extract once you got that powder there you know at the bottom of your plate then you've got like you've got the pure like powerful concentrated uh, elements of the plant and then you could go read the methodology here and see how many milligrams of this extract they gave to the patients and stuff right you could you could start to understand dosage um, at a scientific level once you read how to do the extracts and then and then how much you give okay now see um, more studies here neuropharmacological review here was a review of the no new no tropic herb bacopa manieri now see i already talked about this in another video Nootropic is a whole class of drugs that is emerging right now on the market and um nootropic means mind bending okay and this is the mind bending drugs uh are all those that help with cognitive functions to help make you more alert, learn better, retain information, um, everything that relates to the mind, okay? There's right now a big surge and that there it's everywhere. Uh, uh, when you go to the gas station by the side of the um, of the of the register, you find all these bottles of these uh, um, small little bottles of an of this liquid that like helps wake you up you know like and you have all these energy drinks and all this stuff right well these energy drinks are all new the neurotropics okay they put in taurine in there they put in uh, uh, ephedrine um, they put in there caffeine caffeine is a neurotropic you see they put in a, a combination of things in there that helps like helps you stay alert your mind okay it's mind bending so this bacopa manieri is mind bending <laughs> but it but in a good way okay in a way that that will help like see here they say dementia parkinson disease epilepsy uh and then here they have a lot like in this paper you could learn a lot about how it works on the um, brain chemistry level right here you got all the uh all the chemicals, the acetylcholine and the uh, dopamine, you know, 5-HT neurotransmitter, how it works, and you could learn a lot in the um, in the introduction. And 
So yeah, anticonvulsant, antidepressant, analgesic, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, um, good for H. pylori. A lot of people have H. pylori. It's like a bacteria that grows in the acidic acidity of your stomach. Um, anti-anxiety, adaptogen, um, hematoproductive uh, blood, you know, immunostimulatory, immune system, right? So, right, this is like a pretty, uh, pretty powerful plant, right? And one last one um, before I go into, uh, before um, I talk about a little bit of the history here. The Bacopa caroliana, see, the studies are starting to come out. Microbial activity, right? So there, this is one, uh, 2009. Here they looked just, just at how good is it as an antimicrobial. And then if you read, blah, 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 um, I, I won't read it all, but you know, blah, 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 experimental extract. Ta -da, it's an extract, okay? So you can't expect the same effects of just rubbing the plant on you you got to have a concentration a concentrate of the plant see they're air dried powdered extract 95 percent ethanol see there you go it's always pretty much always this uh soaks socklet um is just a um socklet is just a uh, a lab a laboratory equipment that helps evaporate the alcohol uh, you know it helps the infusion process you know it soaks the um, the plant and then it, it, it brings it back up it soaks it it just it's loop it's looping in and so it's like a percolation rather than just like an infusion and then they filter it out and then see they evaporate it with a ro rotary evaporator and so here right. so there you go let's just go down results they're gonna have a nice table here see this table is really nice because p10 is penicillin sa is ampicillin and VA, okay, so <clears throat> these things are different um, known antimicrobials, you know, um, um, antibiotics. And so they, and then they're, um, you see in the table, they're right here. These are your, these are your standard antibiotics. And then this is the entanol extract. Now, to look at how, how effective this is as a microbial, and this is the one, Caroliana, this is the one that I am, I am harvesting you put it on a um a disc that that has like um that has a gel with the bacteria this let's say this bacteria on in the on the gel and the bacteria could grow in this uh can grow but then you put a little bit of the extract okay and then you see how much it, 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 there'll be a ring around the extract, which basically is is just where where things can't grow, you know, and, and then things they grow. So basically, you're it's an inhibition of the uh, bacteria. So you see, this is like the inhibition zone is in millimeters. So it's like this: there's a ring in millimeters. So um, the bigger the ring, the more it's like it's a powerful, uh, the inhibition was powerful. Okay, so you would just want to look at the numbers to see if they're pretty much matching up. See, the 16 match up to like 18, 12, and 22. You know, there's 18 match up to 13, 16, and 13. It's actually higher, you know. Staphylococcus, Escheria chicoli, um, pneumonia, I don't know, this one, I never heard of it. Pseudomonas. Mycobacterium, this is one that's also like these ones are pretty nasty. Listeria, this is you often have recalls in food. Um, when they most of the time, when you have a recall, it's it's a E. coli and listeria, and so you see it's actually as good as penicillin and uh, as good as this one, <laughs> whatever that one is. Micrococcus, Bacillus, and then the fungi. Candida albicans, right? It's it's uh, this is the yeast, uh, yeast, and then see there you go. So just this here like tells you this plant is also very 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 good for like as an antimicrobial. Okay. Another thing in this book that I found interesting is that they talked about, um, okay, so a long time ago the. Um, the the Indians in India they know they known about this for a long time but also here the natives here have known about its use for a long time okay um, 
here they talk about the early cu Cubans, but um, you, let me see if I could find where I, I read this here. It talks about the natives in Florida, which are, oh, here it is, the Seminoles, okay? I'm not going to read their name, like how, how they gave this name but uh, to this plant. But they, um, they used this plant as cough medicine, as a sedative against what they call turtle sickness, trembling, shortness of breath, and call shortness of breath. It's interesting because I've been studying the breath, you know, and shortness of breath has to do with... Um, with the uh, lung lung capacity CO2 in the blood and O2 in the blood and it, it's linked to the um, ep uh, epinephrine and the response of the brain you know the brain stem and this and that and the other so you see it has been used here also by the natives so that mean before we came here the natives were using this as a medicinal plant so you don't necessarily need to wait for science to tell you that the bacopa that grows here in the uh, in the United States and this this region, the southern root parts, is medicinal because you know it's been proven by rats or the, on rats or this or that. The natives have been using it, and I'm sure if someone like people who are passionate about this, they could probably uh, do a research and try to find. What 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 the natives, other natives than the Seminoles were using it for, right? So, it's just it's just coming really now um, into uh, into light the how this uh, plant here is um, is very useful for some of the modern, uh, more modern mental health um, diseases. Okay, so that's it for now.